think it's time. Um, so I'll go ahead and give uh, Steve Campbell a brief introduction here. I've known Steve Campbell for about a year and a half, and uh, he's had the opportunity to come out to our ranch and um, sit at our table. And he's a, he's a great, great person. Uh, he has worked with Gerald Fry, who Gerald Fry passed away this last year. And um, Gerald was one of the most knowledgeable and gifted men that I've met as far as understanding um, not only livestock, but I think understanding people. He, he taught a lot about linear measuring, and Steve understands that. Um, but last year, we asked Steve to come and do a uh, in-person class, and <clears throat> that, was, that was held in Wells, Nevada, and it was just a few people there. He talked a lot about um, cows, which all of us wanted to hear about, and then he talked a little bit about the human health side of it and how that really relates back to the health of the soil. And it sparked my interest and thought, you know, as we're learning about regenerative agriculture and many of us are facing some health challenges, why is it? You know, why is it that America is leading the nation in many degenerative diseases? including autism and ADD and ADHD and diabetes. And I'll bet if I were to ask, which I've done in different classes, um, if you would raise your hand, if you or someone in your direct family has suffered from one of these diseases, I'll bet by the time that I got to either five, six, or seven, in any given group in America, everybody's hand would be up. So we might start with cancer diabetes, learning disabilities, gluten intolerance is a huge one. And, uh, and then I, I wondered, you know, if we were to ask that a century ago, would we get the same response? And why not? So what's different now than what my um, grandparents and great grandparents dealt with? We're still eating food off the land. Um, we're still farming. <clears throat> but how come? How come it's so different? And I heard a kind of a staggering statistic the other day, and they say that, I don't know, 75% of statistics are made up. Maybe I just made that up. But uh, um, that for every person living on the earth, on an annual basis, there are eight tons of topsoil that um, are depleted, I guess would be the right word. And I say depleted because the, the topsoil doesn't actually go away. It just changes form. It's either eroded by wind or by water, or it can be killed sometimes by the chemicals that we put on the land. And so that's kind of a staggering thing to think about. And if we don't stop the trend, you know what will happen. So Steve's going to talk to us a little bit about this connection of how everything connects back to the soil and, and hopefully give us some ideas of what we can do whether we're producers growing things on the soil, in the soil, or whether we're consumers consuming things, which we all are, right? If I were to ask again, how many of us eat? Well, all of us do. So that, um, I think this, this really applies to all um, humankind. So we'll go ahead and turn it over to Steve. Thank you, Jared. Um, that's quite a, um, <laughs> an introduction. Uh, I guess if I have any, um, knowledge here it was because uh, of something that happened to me 20 years ago I broke my right ankle in a horse accident in uh, January of 2000 or excuse me 1999 and uh, I was like two two and a half months on uh, hydrocodone they're beginning to think I'm a drug addict I just, just couldn't get rid of the pain I went to uh, chiropractor 30 35 times but when I changed what I ate when I quit eating uh, the inflammatory foods and started eating the non-inflammatory foods. It was, it was pretty incredible how the pain went away. And so that started me on uh, two parallel tracks. I'd already started grass finishing that, that year that I met that doctor who said, quit eating this, start eating that. And so I really dug into uh, health, both on the, uh, the soil, the plant, the animal and the human side and so that's led me to this talk that I would like to give today and as Jared, Jared said our topsoil or our, the dirt is still there 
but the, the minerals and the biology are gone out of that topsoil in a lot of instances. And as you can see on the slide, either we don't have enough minerals or we've got too many toxins. Um, Lugol's iodine is iodine and potassium iodide. And as our levels get lower in the body, we have a deficiency in one or the other, and we get hyper or hypothyroidism as a result. Um, I look at people with uh, celiac, gluten, lactose sensitivity as these miners canaries, telling us that there is a problem with the way we commercially raise these different products here in the in the country and um, the straw that broke the camel's back I think uh, I'm going to try to show today that glyphosate is uh, about as big a, a sin as we've committed in the last hundred years um, so I, I keep hearing you know who's your doctor where'd you get your information and um, I got a degree in economics I didn't get a degree uh, in medicine, but uh, the more degrees it seems like we get in these different fields of study, the uh, the worse things get in those fields. So the effects of the pegliflozin in the N3 carboxylic acid on non-fatty liver disease. I mean, I wanted to know what made people fat, and that was the very first article that came up and I guess we just need to stay away from that aisle in the grocery store uh, that's how we stay away from fat I mean it's uh, so much stuff that uh, money that came from somewhere paid for it just doesn't make any sense like uh, Will Rogers would have would have said um, so okay I kind of went through all of this um, the pain left. I mean, it didn't take 10 days when I changed my diet and quit eating those inflammatory foods that the pain left. So the next two or three slides are something that I just got from Dr. Zach Bush off of one of his recent PowerPoints and uh, the rise in autism. I mean, in 1975, I was in college and we're at one in 5,000. Um, wow. It's, and it's, this, it's going up faster and faster and faster. Uh, similarly with celiac, um, the, the bars are the incidence of celiac, but the, the line is the amount of glyphosate used in wheat, as I'll say later. In 2017, 100% of the wheat crop in Saskatchewan was sprayed with Roundup just before harvest to dry it down. It was like Agent Orange in Vietnam. We were defoliating so that they could get the crop out before the weather change. And again, these, these are Dr. Bush's uh, estimates that by 2035, one in 36 will have autism, one in eight ADD, asthma, and you can see the, the prevalence of dementia, uh, one in one. Uh, so I put a little box around the, the top ones, and these are typically the diseases that younger people are going to get. Um, I need to back up just a little bit. During uh, the Vietnam War, they downsized the bore of the M16 so that instead of killing the enemy, they would just wound him because that took two people off the battlefield instead of just one. Well, if we have more and more children getting these diseases and younger in life, we have to take uh, someone out of a productive we're, we're making railroad tracks or we're building skyscrapers or, you know, whatever. Somebody out of the middle has got to take care of the young people. And then I drew a, a box around all of them for older people because we've got some people that are now older that still have autism. And we're, we're drawing from the middle and uh, to, to take care of these people on both ends. So not only do we have an after you get sick care crisis, I refuse to call it health care, Healthcare starts in your garden or in your kitchen or, or wherever after you get sick care. But we are going to have a financial crisis because all of these productive people are taking care of those with all of these diseases. So we need to figure out how to stop this. Um, 
March 11th, 2011 in, in uh, Japan, there was a tsunami that hit this Fukushima power plant. And the very first lap of that cesium cloud went around the world, right through Boise to Philadelphia. And uh, the number of human miscarriages along that line doubled in that 12 months following that um, event. Uh, the longer it went, the wider that path was going across the U.S. I found a lot of, pardon my French, funky things going on with cattle that those animals were either in utero or at mom's side during that cloud passing over. And no scientific data, it's just, it kind of makes sense. We can connect, or I can connect those dots anyways. And then I've drawn in here, I don't know if you saw it show up, this little, this little line going from the lower Mississippi up to New England. In the uh, 70s, there was this book, The Toxic Cloud was written, and it was about how people in New England were getting exactly the same diseases as the factory workers on the lower Mississippi in almost exactly the same percent of population. Uh, it would come up out of those smokestacks and uh, then we'd get acid rain and lead rain and mercury rain and cadmium rain there in New England. Uh, there's no place to hide from this. So whether it came from Fukushima or it was something in Mississippi that affected New England or simply it was the, uh, the neighbor next door spraying his cornfield. We just can't seem to get away from their toxins. Um, on a on a livestock side, at the point of conception, we can never do any better than that. So if we were feeding our cattle, our sheep, our goats, our horses the best that we could, we're going to get at the point of conception close to what those animals had genetically. But as the neighbor's toxins blow in, if we're trying to graze them on low mineral grass or uh, low mineral hay, we're not going to get the expression that we're looking for. So there was kind of this, <clears throat> excuse me, trifecta of things that happened here right around 1970. In 1968, we got the Great Society, Lyndon Johnson, and the Food Pyramid by uh, McGovern, and then high fructose corn syrup. And I, I hope I got the mark about right, uh, 74 was the real onset of it. In 73, Russian crops failed and we sold a lot of grain to Russia. Well, Earl Butts, fence row to fence row, and the next year we're sitting on a mountain of all these grains because the Russians, the weather wasn't, uh, the weather wasn't bad, and they're gonna go, they said, what are we gonna do with all of this, with this grain? And someone says, hey, I've figured out how to make a sugar substitute, high fructose corn syrup. So if you see that dark line running up the top line there, the medical care price index, since uh, 74, the amount of type 2 diabetes in the U.S. has gone up 700%. The amount of high fructose corn syrup sold into the U.S. diet has gone up 76 or 70, 700%. I, I think there is a, uh, a correlation there. We got GMOs come on a little bit later, uh, but I wonder if we hadn't done those three things. If we hadn't had government get so involved in our food right then, what our consumer price index would be today. That's what the dotted line represents. Uh, Gabe Brown, I don't know how many that are following uh, have watched Gabe. Uh, I'll list the five keys to soil health here a little later on. Later on. Elaine Ingham, if we get the biology in the soil, it might have to go down 15, 20 feet, but it'll find the minerals and bring them to the plants. Maynard Murray was a, a country doctor in New England, and he figured out how to put sea minerals and sea water back on the land and, and get uh, back to plants that were immune to disease. Uh, rotational, adaptive grazing, and then, of course, the more of those things we do, uh, the faster we can turn around our soil. But 
I'm using the analogy of a garden hose and you're gonna see that a number of times. If the water is on the kitchen floor, it's running on the kitchen floor, I can sit here and wring towels out all day long and I'm never gonna get ahead unless I go outside and turn the hose off first. Well, we need to turn off the toxin hose and get more minerals into the, into the soil. So here we have the U.S. spending more on what they call health care, and, and you can see the different uh, places that we hold, but I, I call it after you get sick care. Uh, health care is actually preventive care. Uh, physician, heal thyself. Um, biology. In our gut, microbiome, I'll get into that a little bit later, biology in the soil. Um, acute. I broke my ankle and I needed big medicine to fix that. Type two diabetes, all I've got to do is stop eating sugar. When I was a kid, there was a disease called sugar diabetes. We must have cured that because no one calls it that anymore. So <clears throat> here is a, a chart of the mineral content of, of cabbage, lettuce, tomatoes, and spinach over time. 1914, that was right uh, at World War I. In um, Weston A. Price's book, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration, he showed that the longer white man had been on a piece of ground, the lesser physical specimens we were. People were still eating real close to home in 1914. Of the men from the Southeast who presented themselves to the draft board, three out of seven were accepted. Seven were rejected. Of the men from the upper Midwest who presented themselves to the draft board, seven out of 10 were accepted, only three rejected. And it was the amount of these different minerals that were still in the food or in the soil and in the food at that time. And so here's a picture out of uh, Western Price's book. And this is distribution of, I think I've got some more wording out, number of scientists per 100,000 of population. Under 300 down there in the Southeast where seven out of 10 were rejected for the draft. So not only physically, but mentally not having those minerals has affected us over time. The upper Midwest, over 600 per 100,000 of population. Um, and then in the Bible, right after the eating of the apple, God said, by the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food. And you can see what happened in 1928 when we stopped plowing with horses and started plowing with wheeled vehicles. I just found out this last week in uh, Kansas that the faster you plow a piece of ground, the more you compress the soil you're getting rid of that black cottage cheese that the soil should look like even faster. You're compressing it together, that pore space is no longer there. And so the minerals started leaving the, uh, the food and then we added uh, ammonium nitrate to get the production back up because the minerals weren't there. So our corn stalks were now smaller. We had to have hybrid corn where we found if we mix these two corn species together, we could get that using my hand, a corn stalk the size of my thumb instead of just my little finger. Well, what we've done is found corn that could live on lower mineral soil. Well, as we had lower mineral soils, Mother Nature's cleaning crew, the bugs, showed up uh, and the weeds, and uh, we go, no problem, we got chemical warfare agents, we can take care of those, and, uh, and then we had GMOs. Anyway, the argument from big ag is we can't feed the world, but we're not nourishing them the way we're, we're going about it now. Um, there was a book. I mean, you can see that trifecta right there in 1970 where that happened and how many more people started going to prison. Book written in the 90s, and this lady was a parole officer who found that uh, at that time, four out of five parolees were back in prison within five years of her parolees that she could get to change what they ate. Four out of five were still out of prison five years later. 
and again, that little trifecta of things that happen. So we eat to get vitamins, minerals, enzymes, but we're paying farmers to produce tons, pounds, and bushels. And I'm not against the individual farmer. I'm against big food, big pharma, big medicine. It's an evil empire almost. Um, so we eat these mineral deficient foods and we don't get the minerals we're looking for, so we keep eating, trying to get those minerals. Um, Dr. Price, the nutrition and physical degeneration, he was a, he was a doctor in, uh, uh, excuse me, he was a dentist in the early 1900s in Cincinnati and he was seeing so much facial deformity and cavities, he thought it must be something that uh, was in the diet. He was able to go around the world in the 30s and he found 15 groups of people still eating in the old way, nothing modern Western processed in their diet. It was how they grew and prepared to their food. Um, and then Dr. Olry wrote a book, Minerals for the Genetic Code, and you can read his uh, description of cancer. Uh, we didn't have the right mineral and so disease set in. So the next four slides, I'm gonna try to equate NPK and what it does to the soil. Well, similar things happen when we eat corn, wheat, and soy. And uh, the pH goes down and thinking of pH, disease likes a pH system in our bodies, in our livestock's bodies. Uh, the mineral content goes down. You and I, our cows, when their pH is low, even if we're feeding a good mineral, they can't absorb it because their body's pH is too low. Uh, we're having fancier and fancier minerals for our livestock that are less and less absorbable. And part of that problem is the acid pH. Um, as I said earlier, the bugs show up as the minerals leave. And then we come in with chemicals to save these plants. Um, natural solutions don't put money in the bag of Cargill or ADM or Monsanto. Um, the 6.5 is interesting because above that, humans seem to do pretty good, uh, either urine or saliva uh, above 6.5. But if you're, if you're really low, you've got to get your pH above 7 for a month or two. You could do that with lemons, even though they're acid, they're alkaline forming, apple cider vinegar, same situation. Baking soda, there's an acid alkaline forming Foods chart. You can print it out, put it on your refrigerator. Uh, plain white salt uh, goes acid in your in your gut. Uh, natural sea salt goes uh, alkaline in your system. This aluminum deal here. Uh, we've got uh, Alzheimer's aluminum. Alzheimer's aluminum. And the reason they put it in these vaccines is to get your immune system all amped up. And then it gets in our brains and there's no way to get it out. <clears throat> so here we are, I, as I said earlier, in, in Saskatchewan in 2017, 100% of the wheat was sprayed. So mineral, minerals are lower in the food, the pH of our body goes down, disease goes up. Again, earlier I mentioned we've cured sugar diabetes or at least we quit calling diabetes uh, what caused it, sugar. Uh, and then the pharmaceutical comes with the Band-Aid, just like the, uh, the mineral salesman for your soil comes with a Band-Aid when uh, we need to fix the, the main problem. And I am a um, prevention. I'm more about prevention than anything else. I got something popped up here. Hang on a second. Hopefully I don't kill us. All right. Um, so 10% of disease is genetics and 90% is epigenetics. For those of you who've never heard the term before, epigenetics are the air, the water, the feed, the handling of the livestock, the stress of our jobs, uh, overdue bills, not, not enough money, all those sorts of things. And all of these things uh, build on each other. Um, anyway, you can see the change in the, in the amount of 
heart disease, heart condition, 7.5 or 75 versus 412. And the different minerals that are associated with that rise. You get down to asthma and it's magnesium, but every single one of those has magnesium. Well, what's one of the minerals that glyphosate ties up? As you can look on this little box at the top, magnesium, but the others that are, uh, are deficient in these different diseases. Asthma is a magnesium deficiency. If you know someone with asthma, all they, well, can't quite say all they have to do, it would be greatly diminished if you could get more magnesium in them. There's a product called Calm. It works pretty well. There are other products that work better, but big fancy medical fixes are not gonna get at the root of the problem. The root of the problem is lack of magnesium, and that's a, a glyphosate tie-up. So here we are back to Western Price. There was no rhyme or reason the amount of fat, protein, carbohydrates those groups were eating. Some 30% at a minimum and over 80, that would be the Eskimos. And the Eskimos are getting hit terribly bad these days because all of the bad stuff, pesticides, herbicides, antibiotics, hormones, toxins, they all have an affinity for the fat. Anyway, there was no rhyme or reason to the fat, protein, carbohydrate consumption. The common denominator in the 30s was that those 15 groups of people Weston Price found were getting five to 10 times the vitamin mineral consumption as the average American, and we don't get half of that today. And uh, oh, 2,500 years ago, uh, the best thing people could eat at the time were marrow and fat. So my favorite story from Weston Price's book is this Peruvian grandmother. Weston Price had been in the, the um, village at 12,000 feet for 10 days, two weeks, and all of a sudden there was this uh, commotion, and he goes, what's going on? Well, such and such a grandma's getting home. Well, where has she been? Down to the ocean. What was she doing? Catching fish and drying their eggs. Why was she doing that? So that her granddaughters could have perfect babies. Now these next two things weren't invented. She wasn't looking for an HDTV or a Lexus. Her sole purpose in life was so that her grandchildren didn't, weren't born with autism or didn't get it later on. We've kind of lost our focus. Uh, this is uh, Liebig's principle about the short stave in the barrel. Uh, the one we've got to, Fix first is the one that we're the, the uh, most short in. Um, anyway, I was at a ranch about four years ago in the spring, and uh, the last thing we did before we ate lunch and rode back out was uh, we went and looked at their gardens. And the picture on the left, uh, I was about, oh, 10 yards behind everybody else with a couple, and, and I, I mentioned to them, look at, look at the holes. You know, the bugs are having a heyday. So, the lady that was showing us, she looked that, uh, showed us all that. We walked about 75 yards and wound up 20 yards away. And uh, here's another garden with all the same vegetables, hardly a hole. And when she finished, I raised my hand and said, so what's the difference between where we're standing now, the, the garden with no holes, versus the other one? And she said, well, the other one was the original garden plot. Steve said they've been taking minerals out of that soil for 160 years. Where we were standing, had been a pasture up until that year. They had, the minerals had been recycling with the livestock. Um, we got to focus on getting the biology and the minerals in the soil. The halide group is iodine, bromine, chlorine, fluorine. Um, in uh, the early 80s, there was enough iodine in two slices of bread for the RDA recommended daily allowance. And um, there was a big iodine scare, so they took that out and put bromine in there. And I was wondering, well, why did the big bread, if you want to call them that, worry about our health up until 1980? And then they started putting bromine in there, which was going to give us the diseases that iodine had been preventing. Well, what I found is either one of them keeps the air bubbles uniform in the loaf. And of course, as you probably all read here, iodine prevents more cancer, fluorine causes more cancer. They're both the same valence, so if we don't have enough iodine, 
and we have less today because of the cesium from Fukushima. Our body's going to try to use bromine, chlorine, or fluorine, and disease will set in. Selenium, the first thing it's going to do in the body is detox lead, mercury, and cadmium. And then if there's any left over, it'll do what the body needs selenium for. The better mineral to have um, detox Fukushima would have been boron because it's the only mineral that can accept radiation of all forms and not change its electron neutron balance. And uh, I don't know if this is going to be possible, but uh, Jared, I can share these, all of these slides with you. And then if you can figure out how to share them with everyone that's on the call, uh, that would be great. Um, so here's some pictures from uh, the top right from Western Price. The one on the left was uh, no Western food. And the one on the right is uh, a, a narrowed jaw, teeth crowding together. I liken that to the heart girth on the two cows in the bottom picture. Um, don't know that that's exactly right, but it, it really tells a, a statement. Most of our cows today are about 50% body and 50% leg, and our cows could function a lot better on grass if they were about 60% body and 40% leg. So the kind of animals that would finish on grass, the kind of forage that will finish an animal, um, so Maynard Murray, what I like about this picture here is same rock, but look at the difference in the environment and the lack of life above and the, the amount of life below. What, what he found, he was a country doctor in New England and his elderly patients who predominantly eaten ocean-based protein had fewer aches, pains, and diseases than those who'd been eating land-based protein. And so over the course of 20 years, he brought sea minerals and seawater back to the land and was able to recreate that immunity to disease that he'd found in the ocean on the land. Uh, he'd feed pigs mineral rich grain for two weeks and they'd quit rooting and then he'd feed them conventional and they'd go back to rooting and then he'd go back to mineral rich and they'd quit rooting. He could just turn them on and turn them off on the rooting by the amount of minerals in their food. Um, couple of, uh, I'm going to run out of time, so I'm going to skip over this, but uh, very simple uh, solutions. Uh, this three pounds of sea salt uh, per acre uh, in the heat of the summer for $30 on 60 some acres. This guy's cattle who had been gaining about a pound and a half before he applied it gained over three pounds a day for the months of July and August when the uh, gain should go down and then this SR65 which is a mix of detoxifying clay I'm going to get to in a little bit and sea salt anyway over a three-year period of time versus a pretty fancy commercial fertilizer that uh, sea salt conditioner treated soil gave 3.8 tons more alfalfa per acre uh, this one's interesting in that they found for every dollar we spend on supplements, and Steve says, why are, why are we spending money on supplements? Because those things are no longer in our food. Anyway, we, for every dollar we spend on supplements, in usually a health food store or a higher end grocery store, we save $40 on pharmaceuticals. That's, that's crazy. Um, so <clears throat> the top left there, the, the medicine man, uh, you know, the, the kind of thinking which created a problem is not the kind of thinking which is going to get you out of it. When that guy showed up to do his stuff, uh, I imagine the people quit thinking about what they were supposed to do at 2.30 in the afternoon on a Tuesday. He, he was able, one, with his, um, his potions that he made, but also with, with how, how he danced around and how he looked. Uh, lower left, an apple a day, top right, a laying ing ingham, the soil food web. And then this one on the lower right, we've all seen people that are 50 that look 80 and people that are 80 that look 50. We should all be those people that are 80 and look what we think is 50. That's how we should look at 80 if we were getting a mineral-rich toxin-free diet. And of course, here I am just showing food inside of that pill that we should be taking every day. Um, the second 
pop up here. They know what causes cancer. They use sugar to identify where it is because the cancer is like a magnet for the sugar. And so they put this, uh, I see it says dyed, but I think it's irradiated sugar solution. And, and then they can determine where it's at, but they're certainly not gonna tell you quit eating sugar and your cancer, you'll prevent it or your cancer will go away. Um, cholesterol problem, again, we're back to the water on the floor, turning the garden hose off. Um, and if we're taking statins, it's like you can only send one fire truck to my house. Uh, the older we get, the more inflammation. Remember how I got rid of the pain in my ankle? I quit eating inflammatory foods. I imagine my cholesterol was super high back then. But as the pain went away, as the inflammation went away, um, I would imagine my cholesterol numbers went way down. So stop eating the bread made with brominated flour. So if you're going to go buy wheat flour, make sure it isn't brominated because that's causing mineral. And then find something that wasn't sprayed with Roundup just before they harvested it. So we'd be, we'd be eliminating two toxins that are in most wheat these days. Uh, organic by design. And I'm not saying organic, uh, that that's the end all be all but trying to get the minerals in and the toxins out by design. In 1978, Dr. Schubert, they took 100 rats. They're trying to figure out how much lead could be in the environment or in the diet. They feed them enough that just one dies. They call that a lethal dose for one rat. Then they did it again for lead, mercury, cadmium. Then they decided, well, what would it take uh, what happens if we put two of these in? And they had to get down to an LD1 of lead and below 1 20th of an LD1 of mercury before they didn't lose all 100 rats. 1 19th of an LD1 of mercury, they had 100 dead rats. It, it was it was a thousand times as bad and we've got a lot of them. I don't know if this is going to play and I'm going to run out of time, but make notes. You can go on YouTube, NASA carbon dioxide, and it shows the uh, CO2 in the atmosphere. And it, the lower left corner, it shows the day of the year. And uh, what, what happens about the 1st of April when we start stirring dirt? Well, not only are we throwing up carbon dioxide, but those pesticides and herbicides that were in the soil are also getting thrown in the air. So pasture versus pasture. Uh, post tillage stress disorder uh, basically is what happens. I mean, we're killing the biology in the soil every time we till, kill, till the soil. Um, and this one here, uh, I mean, talk about spin. When was the last time you watched the movie Wag the Dog? Anyway, synchronize the drying of the crops. Doesn't that sound so much better than <laughs> we're going to spray Agent Orange and defoliate the, the forest? Anyway, these are all non-GMO crops that they're spraying this on to get them dried down so they can harvest them. And I have garbanzo beans in uh, all caps because it takes more glyphosate to dry the garbanzo beans than any other crop. If you like hummus, you need to be buying organic hummus. So how do we, how do we keep the toxins out? We have to shut off that garden hose again. And this one here I find very interesting because that air pollution, no inability to regulate self-control over temptations and impulsive behaviors. We wonder why we have these school shootings and that guy down there in uh, Vegas on the 23rd floor. Uh, it's a, it, we're gonna have more of this than less of this in our future. Uh, Dirty Dozen, you can go online and Google that. I think this is for about 2015, it says. Uh, they take the 45 most sprayed fruits, fruits and vegetables, or excuse me, most consumed, and they find the 12 that are the most sprayed, which are on the left side of your screen. They say if you would only eat those 12 organic that you would eliminate 75 to 80% of the pesticides and herbicides you would normally eat, uh, eating those 45 fruits and vegetables. And this negative eating, the sugar, flour, omega-6, and GMO, that was the thing that the doctor really had to uh, stay away from. 
So I really like this Redmond conditioner for, for livestock, for soil, the clay, for human beings. I talked about the, the more alfalfa here with this uh, one to 200 pounds to the acre, four ounces a day for a cow. So I was at a place I've been going to for about four years in New York and um, the, uh, I couldn't get them to, to add any enticer to the conditioner. So they were feeding baleage, which was wet. I said, well, just put uh, four ounces a day on top of the, the hay. And uh, I came back about two and a half months later. And for the first time, I finally started seeing happy lines, which looked like these welts just in front of this guy's hand here. But uh, it's telling you everything's right with that animal. Um, and uh, for those ranchers among you that are watching, you see all those vertical folds in the hide right there? That's a long ways back on an animal to have vertical folds. That's a very loose hide. Your replacement heifers out of him are gonna have a lot of butter fat. Your steers that are going to the feedlot or your uh, direct marketed program, those animals are gonna marble very well. Um, so this is right out of the book. We play and wear it too. There was a lady about 75 who took about the volume of my thumb of the clay, Rubbermaid tub, hot water, and with the intention of pulling toxins. In the 15 minutes that uh, it took for the water to cool off, she must have forgotten what she was doing, being 75 frugal. She didn't want to throw it away, so she watered her house plants and killed every plant in her house. She'd pulled so many toxins out of her feet in 15 minutes' time. A uh, friend down in uh, Arizona, uh, Southern Utah, he had his kids all soaking their feet after we talked about this. This is a fascinating slide to me. Um, Jared, if I'm getting uh, short of time here, let me know. Anyway, uh, we've put a cow inside a fence here. We've put a human being inside of uh, their house or whatever. Uh, if we do nothing, that ball is going to roll down the left side of this chart. But if we do a few things just at the right time, you remember that Peruvian grandmother who was drying the fish uh, so that her granddaughters could have perfect babies? If we do things just at the right time, and of course the earlier in life we do them, the more dramatic the positive effects. This Lake Erie heifer is a fellow uh, four years prior he had had a what he said was a bad winter it was really cold normally a winter they snow six to 12 inches you know uh, lake effect and then the melt it would melt they put in mud six to 12 mud six to 12 mud this one winter it snowed in the fall and stayed about 15 degrees colder that was his definition of a bad year those cows were never in mud the heifers out of that calf crop were so much better than the cows that have been born earlier or the heifers that were coming along later, uh, younger. It, it wasn't, I thought he'd change bulls or mineral program. It was simply that winter. Um, so here we are, uh, I'm doing on the cattle thing. When do we eat, wean? How do we wean, what do we feed? The fellow whose kids were soaking their feet, uh, he called me one year, oh, four or four and a half years ago and said, normally I have to wean the calves off of these first calf heifers at three to four months of age to get the cows to breed or the heifers to breed back. But they're not losing body condition this year. Excuse me. I said, uh, well, Kelly, what'd you, uh, do you have a wet year? Do you change mineral? Blah, blah, blah. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Finally, I said, Kelly, how long did you leave those on their mother? And he said, you know, that was the first year I left them on. 10 months, uh, what kind of a leap of faith. Um, anyway, you couldn't pay him $100 per heifer to wean them before 10 months now, because uh, Gerald Fry said he'd never been to a place that was a harder place to, to uh, run a cow, and, and it was that dramatic there. Um, back in the 50s, environment, you know, they're still talking about it back in the 50s. You know, we were going to learn all this stuff about uh, the genome and figure out what our problems were. And what they found out was that 90% of the problem is still environmental factors. This Pottinger's Prophecy is the best layperson's book I've ever found. This is just a list of books now, and it goes pretty fast. 
Um, if you want to learn about how in the house, or you can translate it to animals, environment affects what happens. This is the best book that, uh, that I know of. Um, fat is not all that bad. It needs to be clean and fewer omega-6s. These were not covered in this book, but it needs to be clean and omega-6s. Uh, vitamin K2, we can either eat or supplement calcium and magnesium, but they don't know where to go in the body. The older we are, the more confused they, we get. And uh, this vitamin K2 is like a traffic cop saying, hey, we need that calcium out of the arteries back into the, those osteoporotic bones. I think I just made up a word and get the magnesium out of the bones and into the arteries. And there's examples of how they were able to change that in human beings. Uh, finished, not just grass fed. They, they can't be finished on grain. They need to be finished on grass if you're gonna get that K2. Pharmacology, this is about the biology in the soil. Uh, this is a great book. You can reverse, you can prevent Alzheimer's. If you know anybody, buy this book. Iodine. Uh, again, 98% of us are deficient. It, it prevents more cancer than any other mineral. Uh, Jerry Bernetti, he had to learn all this stuff to keep himself alive. He got, well, he died about three years ago, but he'd gotten sick with cancer 20 some years before that and, and cured himself uh, for 20 some years. Anyway, iodine in the placenta five times. Uh, so thinking about that, women, women are giving a lot of iodine to their babies, either in the placenta or through the breast milk. So women get depleted in iodine earlier in life than men do. It's a big problem. It's easily fixable. Uh, clean water, how important it is to flush toxins and everything else. Now, if, if you read this book and it doesn't change the way you want to farm, uh, to save our future. Uh, there, there, there is no other book that I know that doesn't point it out more clearly than this book does about what we're doing to ourselves. We're changing all the soil to dirt all across the world all at the same time. And then this is Gabe's new book and ah, as promised, Armor on the Soil, No-Till, Diversity, Living Root, and Animal Impact. He's got about 400 acres there right uh, against the city limits of uh, Bismarck, North Dakota. And he said, there is no way that I can ever make that soil as good as the other 1,600 uh, acres of um, row crops that he's got that he can use to cover crops and livestock on. 6% of cancer is genetic. 94 epigenetic and that's that's zach bush again uh you can go online and you can find him there uh community over commodity you know um, i don't want to buy cowboy boots made in china i, I want to keep my neighbor in in business i want to spend my money in my community and then we don't need to just sustain an already degraded system we need to regenerate our soil uh doug flack thought about using this uh, as the uh, Tagline for their farm: Food so good we ate it all ourselves. And then this is uh, the uh, the list of the foods and uh, and how they work. Um, Jared, uh, do we? I think we're getting close to time. Do you want to do some uh, some questions here? We got about ten minutes left. Um, yeah, if anybody has questions, um, you can probably unmute yourself. <clears throat> Where you are the host, you might have to jump on and unmute them. Okay, I can I can try that. Uh, or or feel free to type questions in on the chat box. Let's see. Manage. Wait a minute. Manage participants here. Unmute all. There we go. Now we can hear what everybody's doing. <laughs> um, on this on this list, this raw deal. Part of your diet that's raw, the less likely you are to get cancer. The more that's uh, Cook, the more likely. I mean, it just kind of goes down through there. Um, so anybody can ask a question now, or you could type it if you want. Uh, if you're going to ask a question, please state your name.
a clean I have on here. And fat's the, that's the biggest one to have clean because all the bad stuff, pesticides, herbicides, antibiotics, hormones, toxins, all have an affinity for the fat. Um, the more cooked our meat, uh, the, the worse it is for us. Not, and you notice I put vegetable fats. Uh, it's fat, just like we've either got vegetable fat and animal fat or we got vegetable oil and animal oil. It's still just fat. But they changed the name because they wanted to demonize the word fat. Uh, fermented food, heat, moisture, slight acidity, time, and a little bacteria that's going to ferment. Uh, not sugar. Uh, this Dr. Robert Lustig of the University of California, San Francisco Medical Center. You can Google him and uh, it's a fascinating talk about why sugar is a, is a problem. Uh, we get, need to get the nutrients in and the toxins out. This is that stuff they used on the alfalfa field. <laughs> three and a half tons more uh, alfalfa there over their three year period. Uh, dietary fiber. We're using a stiff bristle broom rather than a mop to clean out our intestines. Questions? Yeah, so um, we've got one question here, Steve, from Jesse Lee. Will you tell okay. us more about the clay you were talking about, livestock and human? Uh, sure. Um, so I live closest to the Redmond uh, one ant of all these places that have the detoxifying clays. And uh, one thing about me, I th like something that's natural. It works. It doesn't cost a lot of money. So you can get Redmond conditioner. Uh, for me, I just go over to Caldwell, Idaho, and uh, I can pick it up there, a 50-pound bag of the, of the livestock, of the ag grade, for less than $10. You know, I don't know where you live, Jared. I don't know where you would have to go to get that. I can buy a one ton bag of that for $190. I take that clay and I ingest that clay. I soak my feet in, well, excuse me, I keep clay. I, I ingest that conditioner. I, I soak my feet in that conditioner. It's the same product, but the clay is handled differently, screened a lot finer. Um, Oh golly, there's a lot of stories, uh, but basically I like to see people soak their feet a half a dozen times before they start ingesting it because you can get a, uh, a healing crisis, a Herxheimer response from ingesting it and not drinking <laughs> extra water. Um, if I may, if, if someone wants more than that, my email address uh, we'll say it again here just before we sign off. My email address is triangle, the letter C, the, the digit three at gmail.com. So triangle C3 at gmail.com. And, and uh, do send me a, a, a uh, an email. Can't remember who was it. Jesse asked the question. Anyway, send me an email, Jesse, and I'll, I'll uh, send you uh, a downloadable version of that book about the clay. Um, it, it talks about it on the human side. And for me, it's a panacea. Um, one more story about this. I called a friend one morning and how you doing? Well, I, I've been up all night long. Sorry about how this is. Uh, Christina is coming out both ends. I've changed the bed sheet three times. And I said, well, give her a half a teaspoon of the conditioner. That's what she had was the conditioner. I called her back 12 hours later and I said, well, how'd it work? And she said, she fell asleep in 10 minutes and slept for 11 straight hours. And there, there are 500 stories just like that. If God gave us the antidote to round up its Redmond conditioner, if, if, I, if there's a panacea, <laughs> For just about everything that ails me, uh, it's the Redmond conditioner or the Redmond clay if you want the human. Great yeah. question. I'm passionate about that if you can't tell. <laughs> yeah, that's great, Steve. So somebody else asked um, the reading list. So I put your email in the chat box. So we've got that. And then I've got on my reading list, I've got most of those books that you mentioned. Um, so if Mine are probably um, 
maybe more producer oriented than they are human health oriented. So if you're interested from a producer standpoint, how to manage regeneratively, um, I, I've compiled a list of books that I would be glad to share with you also. And then uh, email Steve if you want just a copy of the slide presentation. And I'm going to um, attempt to load this recording onto YouTube and I'll post it on Facebook so you can go back and find the link there. All right, um, anybody else who's on have any questions that they want to ask verbally? Kind of going back up through the list of books here. Um, yeah, talk about a hose running. I think we had a fire hose running here for a little bit, Steve. We got lots of information <laughs> in a short amount of time here. You know, this, this brain maker will change people's lives. Uh, you could Google this David Perlmutter on YouTube and, and uh, wow, what a brain. Um, this is a good book, but, uh, you know, this Pottinger's Prophecy, uh, Pottinger's Cats, and the, these three authors, you know, came forward about 70 years and said, you remember what he said back then? Here's how it played out in human beings since that time. It's, this is a fascinating read. Hey, I, uh, I don't have any questions. I just want to say thank you. It's been really fascinating. I'm uh, really interested to, to learn more about everything you've been talking about. Uh, I see Mike is highlighted. Is that you, Mike? Yeah, that was me. Sorry. Okay. Uh, no, that's fine. Uh, good. Uh, there. Uh, th this will have to be a Dropbox kind of a download thing. I'll have to give you a link and you click on it to get a copy of the, the PowerPoint. Um, but it, again, if... Uh, if you're shy or whatever, please uh, email me again, triangle. Well, you put it up, didn't you? You don't need to do that. Um, but uh, sugar, getting rid of sugar is a, is a big one. Uh, um, yeah, that's great. So, um, you know, I guess from, um, from a livestock producer side, um, I can definitely endorse working with Steve Campbell. Um, I know he's willing to come and do on-farm, on-ranch visits, and that's been a tremendous blessing to us. Um, I imagine you also do some consulting and um, things like that, Steve. Um, is there, do you, I think you've got a class coming up, maybe a few on the calendar if folks wanted to learn more. Uh, what would be kind of the next step to be able to plug in and maybe work with you either in a classroom setting or one-on-one -on -one setting? Um, I don't know how far and wide the group is. Uh, the next class is at the end of, end of this month up in Saskatchewan. Uh, but uh, I have one in uh, Missouri, uh, Lynn, Missouri, the 12th and 13th of March. That's the next uh, two-day long class. Um, and then there's going to be one in uh, southern, southeastern Colorado sometime in late May or early June. I, I guess that's what comes to mind. Um, but uh, again, uh, email me, give me a call. Um, I'm, um, I get up in the morning and I want to help people get healthy. And uh, I can do that by one uh, presenting this talk like I just did uh, kind of two weeks in a row, but um, well, three now. But the other is through the, my own livestock or helping other people with their livestock so that they can help their customers get more healthy. Prevention, you know, that's health care. What, we, what we've got, the system we've got now is after you get sick care. And it just frosts me that they're going to try to spin that uh, by saying it's health care. And it's anything but. It's, I needed it for my ankle. You know, I, I shouldn't throw too many rocks. I really needed it for my ankle. Okay. Well, Nat Natalie had her box highlighted once. Maybe she had a question there. Uh, didn't have her, her kids might have had a comment. Or 
All right. Well, pretty neat. Um, it's kind of neat. I know a lot of the names that are in the in the uh, participant list, but there's a few that I don't recognize. Um, but sure, want to thank you for taking time to join in. I will do my best to get this recording uploaded to YouTube and make it available. And again, if you're interested, um, reach out to Steve or to me for the reading list and uh, with questions. Any, any final questions before we jump off here? Okay, a few thanks a million. Um, thanks. When will the recording be up? Uh, I'll try to get it up in a couple, within a couple days. Um, and put it onto my timeline and maybe on to the link on Facebook for the event. Um, I'm not extremely technologically savvy, but I did it once, so hopefully I can repeat that. Um, if I may, just one more thing. It, it's amazing how good things can get in, in two, two weeks of concentrated effort to, uh, you know, for, for, uh, consumers, us as individuals in our homes and our children, or uh, with, with our livestock. It, uh, boy, when you can stop the toxin uh, stream. It, cattle, they have, we have our immune system. And uh, when we quit overloading it, remember the toxin that broke the camel's back at the beginning. When we over, uh, someone, uh, Jesse asked about the clay or the conditioner. You know, if it takes 500 straws to break the camel's back, that, that clay or conditioner is going to get rid of the first 400. So our immune system's not spinning wheels. And so for the stuff that the clay or the conditioner can't get rid of, our immune system's ready to go. Yep. Okay. Well, Steve, thank you very much. Um, our hour is up. You. We had a, had a great time. This, this, presentation I'm sure could be like a day long presentation very easily and elaborated on um, so this was just a this was just a quick taste uh, drink from the fire hose but hopefully you've got enough to realize that a hey, there's there is hope if you're dealing with degenerative disease or any type of sickness illness um, and also that there's an alternative to losing these eight tons of topsoil annually um, hopefully that's not happening on, on my ranch, uh, but I know that my practices need to adjust so that I ensure that it, that it doesn't. So thanks everybody. Thank you all. Hey, thanks again. Thank you, Mike, Spencer. All right, we'll log off here. Oh.